One. So to start, if y'all don't know, when you see someone working a kiosk in a store or mall, they don't, in most cases, work for that store. Usually, they are hired by a marketing company that is hired by the store specifically to sell whatever it is. In my case, credit cards for a hardware store. I won't say the name because I like being employed, but I live in Canada, and that should give you all the info you need there. This is done because usually this involves a pretty particular knowledge of a product, as well as the ability to sell and meet quotas and stuff. So the long and short is, I don't work for Canadian hardware store. Now, I help people as long as it does not get in the way of my work. If they need to know where something is, I'll tell them, or look it up, really available public app. The unfortunate side of this is that because it's COVID times, there's usually a lack of staff, and if you answer one person's question, it attracts like four other people with questions. One day I was working a later shift than usual, and I was doing my thing, and someone asked for directions for an item. I knew where it was off the top of my head, so I answered. Meanwhile, an older gentleman that looked a bit run down was glaring at me. Now I paid no mind because I have a resting bitch face myself, so I don't pay attention to foul looks alone. He, however, wasn't saying anything, so I launched into my sales pitch for the card, and then he started walking away, so I trailed off and stopped. When I stopped, he stopped walking, spun on his heel and looked at me. The following conversation went as follows. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was giving you my sales pitch, but you started walking away, so I stopped. I need you to do your job and get this ratcheting hammer out of the case. I'm sorry, I don't work for a Canadian hardware store. I don't have the keys. If you find someone in a red shirt, you work for them. I actually just work for the credit card place. I'm not part of their team. Give me your manager. I'd have to call her personal phone, as this is Canadian hardware store's business and not card company related. I will not be doing that. I'm sorry. You salesmen are so fucking annoying. Some of you will stalk me across the store every time I come in, ask me twice, and won't leave me alone. I have not left my kiosk because I am lazy and don't like wandering. I'm sorry to hear that. They shouldn't. Our handbook and training says not to be aggressive and pushy. Though I have seen some people be like that in my off time. I know how annoying it can be. This gent clearly doesn't know what he's angry about, and clearly wants to fight. You should be ashamed of yourself. I blink slowly, not sure how to respond. You're a panhandler. You're begging for money and taking advantage of poor people. I'm on welfare because this was supposed to be a full-time job, and they've only been giving me one six-hour shift a week. You're worse than the bums on the street. Go fucking beg outside. I really don't know how to respond to this clearly alcoholic, poorly dressed single dude. I need you to get the tool out, and then take me to your manager, now. As I said before, I don't work here. And if you find someone in a red shirt, nobody fucking works here, nobody works, nobody works. Where are the staff? <sighs> I don't know, they're probably just busy. There are red staff call buttons everywhere around the store, if you press it, someone will come. I will find your manager and I will make sure that all of you vultures never work in any of these stores again. Obviously nothing happened, nobody said anything, nobody talked to me about it. The staff never said anything and my managers never said anything. And it is because I don't fucking work for this store and don't have the damn keys, jack off. <sighs> like, I understand, not knowing originally. And I get why you might think that I would work there. But you would think that the different outfit and dedicated kiosk, the lanyard, and the fact that I told you thrice would point out that I don't work here. 2. Background and Context I'm a 65-year-old white male with a full white beard and a well-earned beer gut. At the time of this story, just after Thanksgiving, I was shopping at a fairly nice mall anchoring department store. Now, to be fair to the Karen of this story, I was wearing a bright red hoodie, but with old, nicely broken-in jeans and grey Merrill hiking boots. Absolutely nothing like the business casual attire of the store employees, also nowhere near a full Santa suit. I know, I've got one. Okay, the story. 
I'm browsing the kids' clothing, trying to find something cute for one of my granddaughters. She likes shirt dresses, long shorts, and unicorns. I had a couple of her size t-shirts with the mythical beasties pictured on them in my cart, and was seeking for shorts to go with them. When I hear the call of the wild Karen, Excuse me? At a fairly high volume from somewhere behind me. Naturally, I ignored it, although I said a quick prayer for whatever luckless individual it was actually directed at. Silly me. Next thing to break my shopping focus was a painfully forceful three-fingered, I know, because I felt three claws, blow to my shoulder. Hard enough to make me take an extra half step for balance. No mean feat since I'm six feet, 250-ish pounds. My fight-or-flight reflex opted for fight. Boating ill for the poker since I am a mildly PTSD veteran. With a 44 Bulldog revolver on my hip, yes, I have a permit, and no, this store does not forbid legally carried weapons. I whip around to face my assailant, stepping back to open up space. My right hand instinctively going for my holster, more to ensure no one is grabbing for my pistol than any thought to pull it. My left hand coming up with my fist clenched. Apparently, this started a squawk from Karen. A 30 to 40 year old woman with an elementary age looking child in tow. She takes a half step back and I relax a bit. We eye each other for a half second or so in silence. I recover first. What is wrong with you? Why did you hit me? I bellowed. She's very contrite, mumbles an apology and flees. <laughs> Just kidding. With typical Karen logic, she screeches, I did no such thing, and if you weren't ignoring customers, I wouldn't have had to. I don't w Now you take me to your village or whatever. My niece wants her picture with you. What? I actually said that. I think my brain locked for a second trying to make sense of this nonsensical topic shift. You know, where you take pictures of kids. Lady, I'm not a photographer. Total confusion. No, I mean, I'm thinking, did I have a stroke? Or is she having one? Of course not. The kids sit on you and get their picture taken. What kind of Santa are you? My brain gears, finally, meshing, remembering the color of my sweatshirt. Ma'am, I'm not Santa. I'm a shopper just like you. Thinking, except I'm not crazy. Karen, puzzlement, finally replacing her entitled wrath in her face. Well, well then, you shouldn't dress like one. You're just a, a tease. I shake my head. So, I shouldn't wear jeans? At that, I start to hear laughter. The kind of suppressed snort that gets away from someone who can't keep glee in sight anymore. I turn and see a couple of employees and a few customers I hadn't noticed before with various expressions, ranging from mouth-covered snickering to red-faced, cheek-puffed grins. So does Karen, who stalks away without another word. Hardly my best comeback, but at least it pleased the peanut gallery. I simply bowed and went back to shopping. 3. I work at a second-hand store. We offer folks a discount based on how often they show up. They can even sell things to us for some spending money. I have dealt with this customer before. He was generally pleasant on my first encounter with him. Yet I know of horror stories from my girlfriend and the rest of the staff. He comes up to the register after having sold some things to us. Also has things to purchase. So how would I go about finishing out this frequent shopper card today? He holds up a car with two spots missing to get a discount on his whole purchase. Now this normally isn't an issue to help folk along if they're really chill with us or are spending a lot of money as is. Well sir, it's usually one stamp per customer per visit, but we can see what we might be able to do here. At this point he doesn't have me scan his payout slip. He gives me two books to scan and kinda has a grin on his face. So it's usually just one stamp per visit? What if I do it in multiple transactions? Well, sir, as I said, it's typically one stamp per visit. However, let me see how much we have here. It's a minimum of $20 for a transaction to receive a stamp. I ring up his first items. They total out at $19.06. So I notify them that we have not yet cleared that threshold. All right, sir, we're not quite there yet. Would you like me to scan one of these other things to get us to where we need to be on the first transaction? Well, hold on. What do you mean? Sir, this total is 94 cents short of receiving a stamp. If we were to add in one of these others, I could give you a stamp, 
and then I can give you your final stamp to apply the discount for the next transaction. He proceeds to produce a one dollar bill and plays it with his first two things. All right, that should get us to twenty dollars. This is where things start to really take a turn for the bizarre. Well, sir, I would still need to scan something else to get us over the threshold, and would need a source of payment to pay for the rest of the total. He still insists on the one dollar bill as being what gets him over the twenty dollars. I explain that he isn't buying a one dollar bill from me, and that I still need to know how he's going to finish the transaction. We go on like this for almost two minutes until I decide it may be best to just call our manager up. The manager is always amazing at what he does, and therefore, I knew I could at least get out from under this mess and growing line. Thankfully, I was the second of two cashiers in that moment. This is the moment where as soon as I get the manager to the register, he decides to switch his approach. So he requests that I void out his other two items and do his payout. Easy, that gets done. Then we get back to the 1906 dilemma. The manager gives me the okay to stamp the card for his transaction, to which he pays for with his credit card. He places three more items onto the counter for his second transaction, which all total over $20. All right, so what about a second stamp? The manager says, sorry sir, it's one stamp per customer per visit. So I wouldn't be able to get this finished out and apply the discount today. I can give you a second card, but I won't be able to finish that one. He proceeds to pay for his second transaction with his credit card, and produces a third stack of four items, that total $42, and likewise paid with his card. The manager ended up giving him a coupon to also use on a later visit as a peace offering for any confusion. He thanks us both for our patience, and I get to escape from the register for a while. My girlfriend thinks he might have been playing dumb to get one over on us. However, this guy always comes across as that kind of dude that wants you to do things his way. Even the way he sells stuff, we can never seek him out. He always tells us to let him browse and he'll come find us when he's ready. The way I describe him there makes him sound like some... mastermind. But really, he comes across as out of touch. So yeah, that's that. Never going to forget him trying to give me a $1 bill like that was going to magically equal $20 on his purchase total, and not getting the huge discount he might have got. Had we done things, so I was desperately trying to explain to him. 4. I work at a pretty well-known toy store in the US where you're known for building your own bears. For those who don't know, how it works is you pick out the empty bear, or cat, bunny, whatever we have, and bring it over to the stuffer, where we'll stuff it up just how you like, and add whatever you want inside. We also have displays of each furry friend, so you'll know what they look like before you stuff them. That was no big surprise. I had just started my shift. Literally, the first people I talked to was a family of three, entitled mother, dad, and kid. Kid was picking up all the displays and tossing them around. It was annoying, especially since both parents did nothing to quell their kid, who had have been around ten but was special needs and could only speak short sentences and acted much younger. As annoying as it was, it happens. Lots of kids come in and play with the displays, not entirely understanding the concept of building their own toy. After a bit of the kid playing, I decided to start to put a few of the displays she wasn't playing with away. I started to pick up a bear at the same time as the kid, but she quickly let go and I put it away. I heard the entitled mother mutter, rude, under her breath, but thought nothing of it. For a short while longer, she made a few more comments like rude and annoying again before deciding to confront me. Entitled mother said she saw what I did and how could I steal a bear from her child? I apologized if that's what I did, but I didn't see it that way. I said I'll be more careful to make sure a mix-up doesn't happen again, but that doesn't seem to quell her. As the kid is still messing up all the displays, the mother goes to talk to my GM. I look over to see them talking and kind of get nervous, but I ignore it, and keep interacting with the kid and dad who has now made himself known. The kid was looking through the sounds and came across a Space Jam sound. I actually had a nice conversation with the dad about both Space Jam movies. When the entitled mother came back over, the kid had grabbed a frog and was about to bring it over to me before the mother grabbed her arm 
and dragged her back to the display while saying, Keep playing with the toys. It annoyed me, and soon Manager 1 came over. When the kid brought over a Bowser, Manager 1 said she'll stuff it, and told me to go do some other task. I went to talk to my manager who hushed me, and said we'll talk later. I didn't hear much of what happened afterwards, but apparently the entitled mother was talking shit about me. At the register, she started to throw on some sub story. GM was gonna give her a discount just to quell her anger, but apparently she called me a fucking bitch, which stopped her from doing so. All this time she was complaining at the registers, so I was actually playing with the kid, getting kisses from Bowser and roaring together. When EM was done paying, she again dragged the kid away from me, saying, Stay away from that toy stealer. After that comment, I decided to be extra petty and say, Have a great day, as they were leaving. EM actually decided to turn around and give me the middle finger. I turned to all three of my managers who were staring wide-eyed. Manager 2 said to GM, Did you see that? I began to cry, and all my managers swarmed me, saying it wasn't my fault. She was just looking for a discount, etc. I quickly stopped crying and went from upset to laughing at how ridiculous the situation is. It also proves just how amazing my managers are. Even though they didn't outright confront EM because she was only making rude comments behind my back and not harassing outright. My GM actually went out of her way to call both the district manager and Malgas Services, whom she was on hold for nearly an hour with, to make sure if this lady makes a complaint, it gets thrown right out. Five. I just got done shopping at a store, not unlike our favorite to hate, and boy, I feel so dumb. First, I walked by a guy that had his hand in his pants. I took a quick sneak peek, and yep, he had his hand over his boxers grabbing his junk, just walking around and shopping like that. What I assumed to be his girlfriend was there, so I decided not to make a scene of it. I was looking for some meatballs, but obviously not that kind, and couldn't find them in the obvious places. So I went searching for a worker to ask. Now Karens, please listen. To get better results, you need to find someone with a name tag and pushing one of those stocking things. So I find a guy and asked him politely and he says, Oh, I know where that is. Just let me return this and I will help you. Sure, I replied, so I waited. He came back with the other guy, and he showed us where the meatballs are. Right in front of me. I feel so dumb. In the checkout line, I realized I forgot something. So while the clerk was scanning the rest, I ran back on and got it. I felt so bad making people wait, so I apologized when I got back. They were cool with it. If you were waiting to hear about the guy grabbing his junk, I'm sorry I didn't see him. Hopefully, because security took care of him. And people wonder why I have anxiety when I go shopping. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, episode 152. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories and sent in stories for use in the stories. Then there were some stories over there, and I think there was some behind the sofa. I don't know how they got there. Um, there, was, there, was, there were some other stories that were juggling stories. And there was a giant story that tried to crush New York. I think it was visiting from Tokyo. Anyway, thank you very much to everyone who allowed me to use their stories and sent in stories for use in this video. If you yourself have stories you'd like to send in, you can send them along to stories of the stories at stories.com. No, that's not right. Send them along to King of the Stories, that's not right either. Send them along to King of the Cities at gmail.com. That's King of the Cities at gmail.com. All right, what day is this today? It is Thursday, I believe. Yes, it is. The day of this Thursday. Okay. Uh, right, now, question of the day. It's a tough one today. It's, uh, I'm almost I'm almost loath to ask it because it's a bit controversial. It's about bread. And what your favorite kind is. Now, me, I'm partial to both well-fired rolls, a.k.a. burnt, some less fancy people might call them, well-fired, and tiger bread, which is basically it's, it's a bloomer type loaf, and if you if you can if preferably you preferably you'll get the ones where you, you can slice it yourself. Uh, annoyingly, some supermarkets will pre-slice them, which is not good because they're always too thin. 
Uh, although my local does do a sliced tig tiger bread and sourdough, which is sort of decent, but it's still better to get the whole one so you can slice it yourself. So, what is your favourite kind of bread? I mean, in the past couple of years, I think a lot of people have gotten a lot of bread-type experience with all those sourdough starters. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.